morning or afternoon, everybody, wherever you're joining us from. Guys, if you are in a space where you can join us on camera, Jen and I love to interact and just see all of your beautiful faces. So please jump on camera if you're decent and in a place where you can you can show us your beautiful face. Um, and if not, that's okay too. Just be mindful of where you are if you choose to be on camera. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Sarah Detmore. I am here with the wonderful Jen Davis. Also as a courtesy guys, please drop, jump on mute if you can. So we don't have some awkward feedback or I, Jen or I will mute you guys as well. Um, we're excited to have you here today. We're gonna spend some time talking about um, ways in which we can build a buyer business within a business. And I'll go on to add ways in which we can build a big, a big, big, big buyer business within a business. So before we get into our content for today, guys, we're going to do some quick introductions. So Jen, why don't you tell us who you are and where you're from? Absolutely. Thanks, Sarah. So my name is Jen Davis. I am located in Springfield, Missouri. Um, I run a team called Holt Homes Group in Springfield. Um, we run what we call a team dependent model, just like uh, Sarah will get into that a little bit on her intro too. Team a team dependent model basically means our team provides a majority of the leads. We pro provide a majority of the um, administrative support. Um, so last year we closed 538 um, transactions with six agents in production. So we, we run a, basically all of our agents are going to close somewhere around 75 to 80 units per year. Um, I, ahead of running our team was our lead buyer specialist for six years and developed a team within the team, which is what we're going to talk about today um, with administrative support, lead generation support, and eventually showing partners. Um, so Sarah, I'm also a maths coach. Um, I co-coach a group program with Sarah Detmore, who is one of my very good friends. Um, and I'm a one-on-one -on -one coach. So Sarah, now you get to be introduced by yourself. You know, Jen, thank you. And before I get into that, can I say how bummed I am that Mega Cam's all digital now because I was looking forward to seeing you. Oh, okay. I'm so, I'm heartbroken. We can, we can cry about that later. Anyway, yep. digital version is still great. We're going to get a lot of great content at Mega Camp. Guys, if you haven't registered yet, please, please do. It'll be great. Um, so I'm Sarah Detmore. I am also a match coach, just like Jen. Um, like she said, we co-coach a group program called the Mega Buyer Agent, which we'll touch on some today. I am out of, uh, with the Loken Group out of Houston, Texas, and have been with the Loken Group for coming up on nine years now. Um, joined the team as a, a baby buyer agent back in um, back in 2013, I think, and have kind of grown my way into that lead buyer agent role. And now I serve as the vice president of our buyer agent team. So I am coaching, leading, training, mentoring my team of buyer agents. And um, there are 16 in total of us on the buyer team. Last year, we did 426 buy sides. And right now we're closed and pended 360 so far for the year. And that's with 11 agents in production. We have some admin support as well on the buy side um, and some showing agents. So really excited to dig into team within a team because I know Jen, you and I both spent quite a bit of time focusing on this with, with our respective teams and we've done it a bit differently too. So yeah. today we're gonna spend some time talking really about those best practices and ways to build the foundation. If, if you guys are in a space where you are wanting to grow that team within your team or just start a team or just like hang out with us for 30 minutes. Like we're, you're going to get it all. So Jen, start, let's start out by talking about, um, well, if I advance the slide, that'd be helpful. Um, let's just talk about kind of some, some best practices and things to consider as we start looking into how to, how to build a team within our team. So when I look at this, Sarah, I want to look at it like I would look at if I were the rainmaker, right? If I'm a rainmaker and I'm building out a business, I want to do it the right way. I don't want to have to go back and make corrections. And so when we look at a team within a team, it could be a big buyer business. It could also, a, a, a top listing agent could do the same thing, right? We could, you could build out any type of team within a team. I have an ISA team within a team on my team, right? So these are best practices. And so when we get into the buyer focus of this, you can swap out showing partners with ISAs. You can swap out showing partners with listing partners. Um, it's just, this is going to be the, the overall umbrella of how you would do it and how you would go about it. Number one, you have to understand that you need different people within your team, right? You need different people, different perspectives, different personalities for a team to be super successful. When we look at this, we want what are called empire protectors and empire builders. 
An example of an empire protector is going to be probably an operations person or an administrative person on your team. This is the person that's going to build out your system so that you have clients for life. This is going to be the person that um, makes sure you get those reviews right on, on Google and Facebook. This is going to be the person that makes sure you're on track and on budget and on time, right? These are the people that make you look good. And without them, you would constantly be five minutes late and super stressed out. This is the first hire. So we're gonna get into that in a later slide. We always find a protector before we find a builder. So what we don't wanna do is build something that's messy. We wanna build something that is well organized um, and that has a very strong foundation. That protector is gonna give you that foundation. An empire builder is somebody that's gonna grow your business, right? They're gonna build upon the foundation that you establish. So an empire builder, an example of that would be um, an ISA. And it, for those of you that are not familiar with the term ISA, it's an inside sales agent. Most places they have to be licensed. They typically are the leverage um, point for lead generation and lead nurturers. They're gonna grow this pipeline for you so that you have plenty of buyers and or sellers to work with. Another example of an empire builder would be um, a, a, a showing partner, right? When you get to the point that your pipeline is so large that you need some assistance in showing, then we bring in a showing partner and that's that piece of leverage is actually the relationship, the face-to-face -face relationship. You guys just make sure you're on mute. Um, so and make sure, so then sorry, reset. So the showing partner, we want to make sure that we understand that piece is the, the relationship leverage, the face-to-face -face relationship with our clients. So that's all, that's not a less than role. When we talk about ISAs or showing partners, empire builders, empire protectors, none of those are less than roles. These are all the building blocks to make sure that you can have this team within a team. When we're getting ready to build out or make our first hire, we wanna make sure that we take career visioning and we probably wanna take it more than one time. It's a ton of information. You have career visioning paired with a 30, 60, 90. It talks to you about the hiring process, what order to go in, what steps to take. It also talks to you about having that training plan in place before that first hire comes on. Again, we're after organized, not messy. So these empire protectors, if that's your first hire, I would also suggest taking them through the career visioning process and then having them go to the class so that they can help you build out your team within a team. We also wanna look at a five-year plan. How are we gonna be most organized? How are we gonna be most efficient in our, in our hiring process and building out our, our empire? Well, we've gotta know where we're going, right? Before we can get started, we have to have some sort of a roadmap of where we're gonna go. And so when we look at a five-year plan, that can be a little bit overwhelming. Gary Keller always talks about that we, that we overestimate what we can do in one year and we underestimate what we can do in five. So if you look at it that way, the five-year plan actually probably becomes your three-year plan. So we just need to have an overall idea of what we're after, um, what, our, what our rainmaker is after, right? We wanna be, if we're building a team within a team, we've gotta be in alignment with that rainmaker. And so we wanna make sure that we've got this five-year plan. Part of that is an organizational chart. How do you want it to look? For me, I want a couple of admin, right? I want a couple of, of inside sales agents that can help me with lead generation. And then I want a couple of showing partners that can help me with showing. That's my org chart, not necessarily yours. You need to look at what it is that you want and then build out that org chart with the missing people. You just put a question mark. Right? You just put a question mark next to, um, next to the job role of the person that you're looking for. Build out those job descriptions for those missing people. Once you know what it is you're looking for and what their job will be, it makes it much easier to recruit to. Okay? If we know what we're looking for, we, we then see that everywhere. It's RADS. They talk about it in bold. When you're focusing on something, when you're thinking about something that comes to fruition, the same goes with a talent search. And then we wanna make sure that we document to duplicate for continued success and training. What I mean by that is, and that's a Gary Keller line, document to du duplicate. It basically means as we're training people, we're going to build ourselves a training library so that we have leverage and training from here moving forward. That can be videos, that can be a script book or a objection handler book, um, that can be um, any type of a recording on a call so that, that people that come in after your first hire, some of the training process is already established. 
The best part of Zoom is that it's super, super easy to hit the record button so that you know that um, when you're recording this and you're, you're going through best practices, say for a strategy session with a, or a buyer consult or maybe a circle prospecting call, if we have those recorded and in a library, it becomes our training library. Jen, of all the things that you shared, which of course I love because I, I, you and I are in alignment on this, right? Yet I'm going to, I'm going to black hat this for a minute. My maps coach has been challenging me to, to black hat some things. If, if I'm reading this or listening to you talk about um, all the things that you just shared a, as a, a buyer agent, maybe wanting to get into this kind of model. And my reaction is, oh, this just is going to take so much time. What would you say to that? If you do it right. It is going to take time. And it, guess what? If you do it right the first time, you don't have to rebuild it later. If you short circuit it now. So often, you know, my coach always says hard conversations, easy life, easy conversations, hard life, easy hire, hard fire, right? Hard hire. They're there, right? They're, they're going to be there for a long time. So Sarah, yes, it does. I mean, how long it, it took me Oh, six years to build out our, our buy side yeah. and we continually are improving it. Same, same. I just wanted to bring that up guys, because, um, you know, it's understandable that if, if you're joining us on this webinar, just with the idea, like baby brain idea of in the future, wanting to make, make your first hire, we want to really challenge you guys and encourage you to, Again, these are just some best practices that, that she and I and other buyer agents and just agents in general, we've had the opportunity to mastermind with and share some ideas that it's building that foundation that just like having that, that really strong buyer consultation or buyer strategy session that sets up the entire relationship with that client. This is the same process. It's, it's setting up the foundation for the team that you intend to build, whether it's a team within a team or just a team, right? Either way, it's the foundation that, again, to Jen's point, takes some time and attention the first time, and it should, because you want to be able to, to replicate that over time as you continue to hire. You know, Jen, one more thing I'll say to that before we move on is... Um, with the Loken group, we just had a round of hires that we joined or uh, that, that onboarded our team back in June. And we, I remember having interviews with some of those, um, those, those new hires back in April. Mm -hmm. It was a six week process just to onboard them. And then we'll talk in a minute, actually the next slide, the ways in which we develop that new hire, because that 30, 60, 90 piece is critical. And our team even does a 30, 60, 90, like 120, 150, 180. Right. We have, we've gone through this enough to where I know as a buyer agent and, and, and the, the leader of our buyer agent team, when I onboard new buyer agents, they should be at standard within six months. And that's the, that's the 180 that we're looking at here. So anyhow, I just, I wanted to share that for anybody who's on listening to this and thinking, no way I'm going to hire my neighbor. Great. <laughs> good luck. And your neighbor probably is great. However, one of you is going to have to put a for sale sign up in your yard. Somebody, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. And guys, as we're going through this, drop some questions in the chat box. We um, usually save time for Q&A. So let's talk about just how do we develop a successful hire? I think that's one thing that we often, you know, questions that come to mind for me um, that I talk to other buyer agents about is, oh, well, how do I know when I need to hire somebody? And once I, I find that person, then, then what do I do? And this is still, we're building that foundation, right? We want to have, <clears throat> take the time, again, take the time, make the time to develop that successful hire, because then like Jen said on the last slide, you can document to duplicate a lot of things that you're, um, you're working on the first time that will help you build things out. I don't want to say faster. It shouldn't be a fast process yet in a more efficient way moving forward. So guys, time blocking again, basic agent 101 skill is time blocking. Sorry if you hear my dog sneezing in the background. There's just, I don't even know. Um, I want to time block to train. And you can go back to, gosh, 2016, when I made, when I hired my first showing agent, different maps coach at that point. And I asked my maps coach and I was like, I just don't have the time to train this person. And his question to me was, what might that cost you? And I was like, well, dang it. Okay. Yeah, I hear you. Cause my first, my first thought was I'm taking time out of my dollar product, my dollar productive activities to train somebody else 
why can't they just figure it out and start working with me? And that's, that's not how this works. So I, I looked at my business and where I was at the moment and knew that I was going to have to put more time back into my business the next month or in, you know, in those same weeks I was training to stay on track with my goals and also dedicate the time to my showing partner that I know that they needed to be successful. And in addition to that, guys, that 30, 60, 90, if you haven't, if you're on this call and have never heard of a 30, 60, 90 high, high 30,000 foot view, it's a, it's a training plan that has benchmarks every 30, 60 and 90 days. So within the first three months that you're onboarding somebody into your world, you should have pretty extreme clarity on whether or not they're going to, they're going to make it with your company. Okay. And at that 30 day mark, right there, there are measures of success that we want to see that, that new hire, um, master essentially in that first 30 days, if they don't, maybe we have a conversation about it and reset some expectations, another set of expectations and, and activities for them to achieve between 30 and 60 days. And that 60 day mark, they, that we have a meeting and talk about their, their training and what progress they've made, any challenges or concerns we have. And so you kind of are buying into the opportunity with that new hire where if at 30 days, guys, there's a red flag, cut them loose. Why keep them for an additional 60, 90, 120, 150, 180 days? If at that 30 day mark, you're like, something's not right here. That's the kind of the, the idea behind that 30, 60, 90 is you can stair step your way into not only onboarding that person in a way that, that makes sense for your company and for the training platform you've designed, but if you hit that benchmark and it's not a win, you can part ways in business after 30 days. And there you go. And that also gives you the opportunity to set some really clear expectations and goals. For those of you who have ever heard Jen and I um, in, in one of our webinars in anything we've ever done, we probably talk about expectations until we're blue in the face. And it's so true. It's the setting of the expectations and then also the managing of the expectations. This is something I'm working on with my children, ages six, three, and well, she's six months old, but um, any advice on that would be great. So just hit me up later, but that's true in business. It's true in your personal life. The setting and, and managing of the expectations, guys, will, will take you to all kinds of levels in business and in life. And the, the 30, 60, 90, again, allows us the opportunity to set those really clear expectations and also set those goals that we're wanting to measure. It also makes it measurable. We like, to, we like it when things that we can measure, right? And this is something I love to say, is your standards are what you tolerate. For example, if I'm, if I'm onboarding a new buyer agent and we go through their 30 day goals and I set some really clear expectations and at day 30, we have a meeting and I'm like, oh, it's no big deal. You didn't do those things. Then what I'm tolerating is, is actually not the standards of the, and the expectations that I set. I'm tolerating just something way below that. So it's also important to hold the line on those expectations and make sure that you, you and um, your new hire have clarity on what those expectations are. And I love the idea of keeping the culture of productivity. Okay. For those of you who are big Simon Sinek nerds, I love Simon Sinek. I was actually just YouTubing some random videos of him not long ago, just to remind myself of some of the great things that he says, your clients don't hire you. They hire why you do what you do. They hire what you represent. Okay. And that's a way in which we, we can maintain and keep this culture of productivity within our company is because when you're even going through that, that career visioning process, you're looking for somebody who is in alignment with your, your mission, vision, and values. And in fact, that's probably first step of even going through the hiring process is, is getting clarity on your own mission, vision, and values. You want to hire people in your world who are in alignment with why you do what you do, because that's how you're going to keep that productivity high. Jen, what did I miss on this slide? Nothing. I think it looks good. We're getting some questions in and guys, we'll try and get to those at the end. Ooh. In the event that we don't, we will answer those in an email to you um, offline. So we'll, we'll make sure everybody gets their questions answered. Yeah, I'm checking the time. We'll move on guys. Keep me on track, Jen. I'm so sorry. So real okay. quick, let's, let's talk about making a great hire. So I think when we're making a great hire, and I know that, that Molly is on here, she's one of my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. We just had this conversation. We've got to be very specific in what we're looking for. My number one thing that I'm looking for, and this would be an empire builder or an empire protector, is I want someone that's coachable. I want someone that's willing to learn and make adjustments. I have a very high type A personality in that I like to control everything around me. 
Um, so somebody made a comment, they have a struggle releasing. You're having a struggle releasing because you don't have the right person. Once I have found the right people, I'm very good at releasing it because they have been coachable. They're open to learning. They're open to talk, you know, to, to meeting my standards and expectations. We also want to have somebody when they're coachable and they're willing to learn that they have a high sense of urgency. So what I mean by high sense of urgency, if I give them the, the hot potato, I want French fries back, right? Like that's what I'm after. I'm giving you something. I want something and I want it immediately. Those are things that you can't coach or train to. That's, that's how somebody's going to move something forward in the process. And again, guys, this is empire protectors and empire builders. I want an, a, a, somebody that's an admin to, to jump on issues that they see in my email if I'm out in a showing. Or I want a showing partner to move that buyer forward in the process if they're the one in the field with the client. So regardless of role, sense of urgency is probably one of my top things because that is something that you can't teach. People either have a fast paced motor or they don't. That's what I want. And when we're interviewing people, what we're going to talk about are what is it, what's it, what's your best example of when you had an issue and how you moved it forward and how long did it take? What are those? That's what I want to know. I want to get into how they think and how they, what their habits are. The key indicators of making a hire, right? When we know that we're, we're ready to make a hire is number one, your customer service slips. So what you find is you've got um, all of these buyers or, and, and you're starting to drop the ball a little bit, right? Your, your negotiations are, are kind of taking a, a second stage to showings, or maybe you're not getting back to people within 24 hours or two hours or whatever your standard of communication is. When your customer service slips to the point where you're like, I don't really want to ask that client for a review because I'm not sure what their experience was. That's a pretty key indicator that we need to hire someone. When we hit a ceiling, we either need a system or a person. So we talked about getting your empire protector in there. They're going to build out those systems. When the systems are capped and you, you, you find yourself back to, oh, customer service is slipping again. I can't ask this person to leave me a, a review on Google or, or wherever you're going to get reviews. Then you know the next step is a person, right? There, there's a ceiling. We need a system or a person. And then that we're so busy that leads begin to drop. That's that panic in the middle of the night, you wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot to call Sarah back. She wanted to see two houses on Saturday and I forgot. Or, oh my gosh, I meant to call her about her inspection. You know, I got the inspection report back and um, I meant to call her and she's texted me twice and now I've got showings back to back to back all day long. I'm not even gonna be able to call her till 7 p.m. That's when that happens, when you're living in chaos that's the life cycle of an agent though, guys. That's the peaks and valleys in your business. So if you want to run a business like a business instead of like a real estate agent where you have a consistent number of closings every single month with a consistent number of leads, when this is happening and leads are dropping, we've got to have a person that evens that out that can then lean in and provide that, that second level service. All right, Sarah, what's on our next slide? Well, you know, Jen, real quick on this is, um... Of course, love everything that you said. And I think this is a question that we often get, right? Is the key indicators when you're ready to hire. And you may have to live in, in the messy for a little bit mm -hmm. to, to get that clarity on, on what your next move is. So you want to kind of embrace the chaos, not, not encouraging you to live in chaos every day. Like that's not super healthy yet. A lot of, um, a lot of the, the, the building of the teams and the hiring, I think, comes from recognizing patterns. It's just like when, Jen, we talk about in our group coaching program, all the ways in which you and I have just through trial and error and a lot of failing forward for that matter, have learned to set certain expectations in that buyer consultation because we kept getting the same questions from the buyer over and over and over again. And I'm like, what am I missing? What question can I ask up front to where I, that, that question doesn't come up in the process um, on, on the back end? This is kind of the same concept. It's, it's um, recognizing the patterns in your business, and then that should give you some clarity on where you go next. So just wanted to throw that in. Also some great questions in the chat box I'm excited to get to. So let me just kind of jump through this. So we want to follow the model of hiring guys. This is straight out of the MREA. And, um, 
And it doesn't specify an MREA that you build it out on the buy side. Yet this is a very much a copy and paste model where we want to hire the admin first. That's your first piece of leverage, Jen. We talk about it all the time, yet um, buyer agents often want to hire what first? The showing partner. They, they want to leverage the showing. Yep. Always. And not to say that that's wrong, guys. I've even done it that way before and I had some success. Yet if I was thinking five years down the road, the foundational piece to build first is the admin. Somebody who can support all those non-dollar producing activities. And again, be the one to document and duplicate all those future systems and, and models that, that your, your clients will follow, which will then allow you to add in the lead gen support and then add in that showing partner. Jen, I can see you wanting to say I'm something. I'm to say something. I'm so sorry. So we, here's what happens, guys. Everybody wants to jump to the showing partner because they think that's when they're going to get their time back. Mm -hmm. That's your highest rate of return. That's where you make your money. It's where the show is right? That's the, that's the part where you get clients for life and you have to go through this. If you hire out of order and you have a showing partner and that showing partner is in showings and you don't have admin support, guess who becomes the admin support? You as the buyer's agent. Yep. You as a buyer's agent, that's not a dollar producing activity. It is, it, it just isn't. Okay, Sarah, go through lead generation. Well, so the only, and again, I won't spend too much time on this, guys. You can write this down. You'll get a recording of this because we do want to get to Q&A and my watch says we have four minutes left. I forget this is 30 minutes, not an hour. Um, yet with with adding that showing that showing leverage first, and Jen, I love that you shared, that's our, our highest return with our, our time as a buyer agent. Guys, if you're feeling burnt out by showings, I wanna challenge you to look at the buyers you're showing right now. If you've shown them more than 10 houses and they haven't yet written an offer, take a step back and let's get really clear as to what's causing them to hesitate. Because oftentimes it's the, the burnout the buyer agents start to feel with the showing, 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 we missed an expectation. We missed, we missed motivation. We missed time frame. We've missed something with that buyer that's causing us to continue to feel like we have to show them houses expecting a different result. And that's where, where the buyer agents want to leverage the showing first. It's because they haven't yet mastered the showing piece of it where they could show three houses and get a buyer under contract. So smart. Okay, let's move to Q&A. And actually, we're going to move two slides forward, guys, real quick. For this is, this is content, guys, that Jen and I really dig into in our group coaching program. So for those of you who might be interested in looking for a way to, um, to, to grow into this space in the four, third and fourth quarter of the year, um, we launch our group coaching program, Mega Buyer Agent, on September 1st. It's a six-week program. You get six weeks of Jen and I for an hour each week on a Wednesday at, at actually this time at 11 a.m. Central. And the investment, guys, is just 198. I think I did the math. It's like, what, 20-something bucks a week. So um, we go through consultation expectations, lead gen, building a team within a team. We spend a whole week talking about showing agents and how that sets your business up for success. So should you be interested, you can hop on the MAPS coaching website and, and search for the Mega Buyer Agent Group program. We're currently taking registrations and we launched September 1st. So let's go back to Q&A, Jen. Let's dig some questions out of the, the chat box here. Okay. So we've one question that I think would be a quick answer um, is, okay. I saw well, one from, um, go ahead, Jen, but there's one later. later. Yes. You'll have the recording emailed to you within the, within the 24 hours. So Pamela, Pamela shared with us that she has the most difficulty with time. Pamela, based on your comment, it looks like your time blocking skill is, is, I mean, is there perhaps it's the discipline and following the schedule, because what I'm seeing here is that if you'll take yourself out of your legion time to jump on an immediate issue, my first question is, what, what, what specifically is an immediate issue, right? Is it, in, is it immediate to the client or is it immediate to you? Because truthfully, the best discipline would never pull us out of our legion time block. And when you can follow that schedule, and I mean, it, time blocking is one thing, it's, it's the discipline to follow the schedule, that's another. And when you can follow the schedule in a way that makes sense for your business, that's where you'll likely see more time back in your world. I always put it this way, Sarah, the morning is to grow our business and the afternoon is to service it. So in the morning, that lead generation, if you guys want to always have a consistent number of buyers and sellers and people to work with, that morning is the non-negotiable. That's your future business. The afternoon is to service it. When the servicing part becomes a problem and creeps into lead gen, you either need a system or a person. 
Absolutely. Okay, let's do one more question, Jen. Dig one out of there and we'll answer real quick. Um, there are a couple of questions on um, if the team has admin support, why would you need an admin? So I'll jump into that. Mm. Basically, we absolutely leverage what is provided to us by the team first. Typically, what happens, though, is as you have massive growth on the buy side. So when I say massive growth, by the time I hired an admin for just me on the admin side, I was doing 180 buy side units. It was myself and two showing partners, and I needed an admin that wasn't the team's because I needed them to do additional things for me, almost like an executive assistant. So when you look at it, absolutely utilize what the team provides at a certain point though there will be there there will become where you're you're waiting for things or it's preventing you from growing just utilizing who's there so absolutely that's your first leverage utilize that until it becomes that that is the issue and then we just bring somebody into our world that can focus on helping protect our business within the business Beautifully said, guys. And we always want to respect your time. Again, we are one minute over instead of sometimes we go like 10 minutes over. So like Jen shared, though, guys, any questions we have in the chat box that we didn't get to, thank you guys for jumping in and participating. She and I will go through and personally respond to these questions. Or of course, she and I are both always here for you as a resource. I know Jen just put her email address in the chat box, and I'm doing that as well. Um, guys, we want to we want to support you guys in business. We are, are here to, to be a support for you. Um, so thank you, much for joining us today. You can also, um, you know, just hop on the MAPS group coaching website. If you have interest in joining our, uh, our group coaching program launching September 1st, you can also go into Facebook. I know we're like dinosaur social media over here, but you can go into Facebook and search for a group called, um, buyer agent mastermind dash kw that's a facebook group that jen and i both um, are admins for and we have a lot of conversation going on in there about i saw a few people ask questions about 30 60 90s other people from different parts of kw will jump in there and drop in their 30 60 90 guys we're all here to be resources for each other because we like to r d rip off and duplicate and here we go the show the coaching program is called the mega buyer agent so guys we'll get to your questions expect an email from us and have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. Make it a great day, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, Jen. Bye, Sarah.